Come follow me, February 28th to March 6th, Genesis 28 to 33. Surely the Lord is in this place. As you read Genesis 28 to 33, ponder what you learn from the examples of Jacob and his family. Write down any impression you receive. Record your impressions. Chapters 28 and 32 of Genesis tell of two spiritual experiences that the prophet Jacob had. Both happened in the wilderness, but under very different circumstances. In the first experience, Jacob was traveling to his mother's homeland to find a wife, and, along the way, spent the night on a pillow of stones. He may not have expected to find the Lord in such a desolate place, but God revealed himself to Jacob in a life-changing dream, and Jacob declared, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Years later, Jacob found himself in the wilderness again. This time, he was on his way back to Canaan, facing a potentially deadly reunion with his angry brother Esau. But Jacob knew that when he needed a blessing, he could seek the Lord even in the wilderness. You may find yourself in your own wilderness seeking a blessing from God. Maybe your wilderness is a difficult family relationship, such as Jacob had. Maybe you feel distant from God or feel that you need a blessing. Sometimes the blessing comes unexpectedly. Other times it is preceded by a wrestle. Whatever your need, you can discover that even in your wilderness, the Lord is in this place. Thoughts to keep in mind. The house of Israel. Somewhere in the wilderness, east of Canaan, Jacob nervously awaited an encounter with his twin brother Esau. The last time Jacob had seen Esau, about 20 years earlier, Esau was threatening to kill him. Jacob had spent all night wrestling in the wilderness, seeking a blessing from God. As a result of Jacob's faith, persistence, and determination, God had answered his prayers. That night, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, a name that means he perseveres with God. This is the first time the name Israel appears in the Bible, and it's a name that perseveres throughout the book and throughout history. The name soon came to refer to more than just one man. Israel had 12 sons, and their descendants were collectively known as the House of Israel, the tribes of Israel, the children of Israel, or the Israelites. Throughout history, the children of Israel attached great significance to their descent from one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Their lineage was an important part of their covenant identity. The Apostle Paul proclaimed that he was of the tribe of Benjamin. When Lehi sent his sons to Jerusalem to retrieve the plates of brass, one reason was that the plates contained a genealogy of his fathers. Lehi discovered that he was a descendant of Joseph, and his posterity's understanding of their connection to the house of Israel proved important to them in the years to come. In the church today, you may hear about Israel in expressions like the gathering of Israel. We sing about the Redeemer of Israel, the hope of Israel, and ye elders of Israel. In these cases, we aren't talking or singing about the ancient kingdom of Israel only, or the modern nation called Israel. Rather, we are referring to those who have been gathered from the nations of the world into the church of Jesus Christ. We are referring to people who persevere with God, who earnestly seek his blessings, and who, through baptism, have become his covenant people. Your patriarchal blessing declares your connection to one of the tribes of the house of Israel. That's more than an interesting piece of family history information. Being a part of the house of Israel means that you have a covenant relationship with Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. It means that you, like Abraham, are meant to be a blessing to God's children. It means, in the words of Peter, that ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It means that you are the one who perseveres with God as you honor your covenants with him. Genesis chapter 28 Isaac forbids Jacob to marry a Canaanite. He blesses Jacob and his seed with the blessings of Abraham. Esau marries a daughter of Ishmael. Jacob sees in vision a ladder reaching up into heaven. The Lord promises him seed as the dust of the earth in number. The Lord also promises Jacob that in him and in his seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. 
Jacob covenants to pay tithes. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him, and charged him, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, and go to Padnam Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughter of Laban, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land there wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padam Aram unto Laban, son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan Aram to take him a wife from thence, and that he, as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and had, what, had gone to Padam Aram. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, Mathalah, the daughters of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Neba Josh, to be his wife. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it, and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid, and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning, and took the stone that he had put for his pillows, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the place of that, and he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis twenty-eight ten to nineteen, the vision of Jacob's ladder at Bethel. Two comments by Latter-day Prophets give a greater understanding of the significance and meaning of Jacob's experience at Bethel. The Prophet Joseph Smith said, speaking of Paul's comment about one who was caught up in the third kingdom, Paul ascended into the third heavens, and he could understand the three principal rounds of Jacob's ladder, the telestial, the terrestrial, and the celestial glories or kingdoms. President Marion G. Romney explained, why this vision of heaven was shown in the form of a ladder, and why the name of the place where it happened was called Bethel. When Jacob traveled from Beersheba toward Haran, he had a dream in which he saw himself on the earth at the foot of a ladder that reached to heaven, where the Lord stood above it. He beheld angels ascending and descending thereon, and Jacob realized that the covenants he made with the Lord there were the rungs on the ladder that he himself would have to climb in order to obtain the promised blessings, blessings that would entitle him to enter heaven and associate with the Lord. Because he had met the Lord and entered into covenants with him there, Jacob considered the site so sacred that he named the place Bethel, a contraction of Beth Elohim, which means literally the house of the Lord. He said of it, This is none other but the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. Jacob not only passed through the gate of heaven, but by living up to every covenant, he also went all the way in. Of him and his forebear, and his forebears, Abraham and Isaac, the Lord has said, because they did none other things than that which they were commanded, 
They have entered into their exaltation according to the promises and sit upon thrones and are not angels but are gods. Temples are to us all what Bethel was to Jacob. Even more, they are also the gates to heaven for all of our unendowed kindred dead. We should all do our duty in bringing our loved ones through them. Back to the scriptures. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and get, will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the, t- the tenth unto thee. Genesis chapter 29. Mm-hmm. Jacob meets mm-hmm. Rachel at the well. He serves Laban seven years for her. Laban gives to Jacob first Leah, then Rachel in marriage. Jacob serves another seven years. Leah bears Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked and behold a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot, until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near, and rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel, and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother, and that he was Rebekah's son, and she ran and told her father. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 29, 12. How were Jacob and his wives related? The following genealogy lines show clearly that each of the three great patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, married relatives. The broken lines show marriages, and the dotted lines show individuals who are the same. Abraham married Sarah, who was his niece. Isaac married Rebekah, who was his first cousin once removed. And Jacob married Leah and Rachel, who were his first cousins. Back to the scriptures. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldst thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 29, 17. Leah was tender-eyed. The Hebrew word translated as tender means soft, delicate, or lovely. The fact that this trait was emphasized for Leah, while Rachel was described as beautiful and well-favored, that is, beautiful in every respect, seems to suggest that Leah's eyes were her most attractive feature. Back to the scriptures. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve three, I'll serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. 
And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah his maid for her handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet in seven other years. And Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 29, 20-30, The Marriage of Jacob to Leah and Rachel. Here is the... Here is given the first glimpse of Laban's crafty nature. After promising Rachel to Jacob for seven years of service, Laban sent Leah to Jacob's tent to consummate the marriage. The modern reader may find it hard to believe that Jacob did not discover the switch until it was morning. However, the following possibilities could explain the success of Laban's ruse. As sisters, Rachel and Leah may have been quite similar in height, weight, and general appearance. Second, the women of Haran sometimes veiled themselves. Third, Laban was a shepherd. If he was a typical shepherd of ancient times, he dwelt in tents instead of in permanent dwellings. The inside of a tent at night can be very dark. And finally, knowing what the reaction of Jacob would be if he discovered the substitution early, Laban may have told Leah to speak as little as possible so as not to give the deception away before it was too late to change it. Though Laban demanded another seven years for Rachel's hand, he allowed Jacob to marry her once the seven days of wedding feast for Leah were finished and to fulfill his indebtedness after the marriage. The gift of the handmaidens to each daughter made the servants the direct property of each wife, not of Jacob. Thus, later, when the handmaids had children, the children were viewed legally as the children of Rachel and Leah. Back to the scriptures. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 29, 31. Did Jacob hate Leah? The Hebrew word sane does not mean hate as the term is used today, but rather conveys the idea of loving less. A better translation would be, when the Lord saw that Leah was loved less and was not favored, he opened her womb. Back to the scriptures. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction, now therefore my husband will love me. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. Genesis chapter 30. Jacob marries Bilhah, and she bears Dan and Naphtali. He marries Zilpah, and she bears Gad and Asher. Leah bears Issachar and Zebulun and a daughter Dina. Then Rachel conceives and bears Joseph. Jacob works for Laban for wages of cattle and sheep. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister, and said unto Jacob, Give me children, or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead, who hath withheld from thee the fruit of thy womb? And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid, to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. And Bilhah conceived, and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, 
With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, A troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest, and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee to night for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my th son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived, and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God, God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband, and she called his name Issachar. And Leah conceived again, and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endured, endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. And afterward she bare a daughter, and called her name Dinah. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her, and opened her womb. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis thirty fourteen to 22 What are mandrakes, and why did Rachel want them? Although Bible scholars are not sure exactly what plant is meant by the word mandrake, the significance of this plant to Rachel and Leah is clear. The Hebrew name denotes love fruit. The fruit had a pleasant taste and odor and was supposed to ensure conception. In other words, the mandrakes were thought to enhance a woman's fertility and ability to have children. Knowledge of this belief helps explain the interchange between Rachel and Leah. Rachel desired the mandrakes so that she could at last bear children of her own. As has already been seen, there was a fierce competition between the sisters in this regard. Leah's response was, therefore, equally na natural. She indicated that Rachel had already taken her husband, which probably meant only that Rachel had the first place in his affections. Some scholars, however, believe that this passage means that Jacob actually lived in Rachel's tent rather than in Leah's tent. The one advantage Leah had was her ability to bear children, while Rachel could not. In essence, she told Rachel that it would be foolish for her to give Rachel her mandrakes and help her have children, for this would only lessen Leah's one advantage. So Rachel made a counteroffer. She promised that she would encourage Jacob to go to Leah that night if she, Rachel, could have the mandrakes. Leah agreed and told Jacob. Out of the agreement, Leah conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. She later bore another son and Jacob's daughter, Dina. Although not stated specifically, the record implies that the mandrakes did nothing for Rachel. Finally, Rachel did conceive, but it was not because of mandrakes. Rather, God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Back to the scriptures. And she conceived and bare a son, and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 29, 31 to 30, 24, the children of Israel. The scriptures in this chapter indicate that each child born to Jacob was given a name which reflected the feelings of his parents. There was a tremendous comp uh, competitive spirit between the wives. Being able to bear a male child for their husband was a great honor. Rachel apparently was very sad that she did not have a child until later in life. When she finally bore a son, the name she gave him indicated her feeling for him and the hope she had in the future. The twelve sons of Jacob are listed below. Mother, Leah, name of son, Reuben, meaning, see a son, reason for name, Joy for having a son. 
mother, Leah. Son's mm-hmm. name, Simeon, mm-hmm. meaning hearing. Reason for name, because the Lord heard that she was hated. Mother, Leah. Son's name, Levi, meaning joined. Reason for name, this time will my husband be joined unto me. Mother, Leah. Son's name, Judah, meaning praise. Reason for name, now I will praise the Lord. Mother, Bilha, son's name, Dan, meaning judging. Reason for name, God hath judged me. Mother, Bilha, name, Naphtali, meaning wrestling. Reason for name, with great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister. Mother, Zilpa, son's name, Gad, meaning troop. Reason for name, Leah said, a troop cometh. Mother, Zilpa, son's name, Asher, meaning my happiness. Reason for name, Leah said, happy am I. Mother, Leah, name, Issachar, meaning a reward. Reason for name, God hath given me my reward. Mother, Leah, son's name, Zebulun, meaning dwelling, Reason for name, now will my husband dwell with me. Mother, Rachel, son's name, Joseph, meaning, adding. Reason for name, the Lord shall add to me another son. Mother, Rachel, son's name, Benjamin, meaning, son of my right hand. Reason for name, you are the son of my right hand. Back to the scriptures. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go unto mine own place and to my country. Give me my wives, my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou hast before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for mine own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. And I will pass through all thy flock today removing from thence all the speckled and the spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and the brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring-straked and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that has some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. And he set three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar, and of the hazel and chestnut tree, and pilled white strakes in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had pilled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods, and brought forth cattle ring-straked and speckled and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs, and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring straight, and all the brown in the flock of Laban, and he put his own flocks by themselves, and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass, whensoever those stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in, so the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and maidservants, and menservants, and camels, and asses. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 30, 37-43 
Did the peeled rods influence the conception of, of the flocks of Jacob? Jacob's peeling of branches and placing them before the animals so that when they conceived they would bear multicolored offspring seemed to be a reflection of a common superstition that the conception of offspring is influenced by what the mother experiences or sees at the time of conception. Nothing is known by modern science to explain any relationship between what Jacob did and what happened in the hereditary patterns of the animals. Perhaps something is missing from the text. Perhaps the Lord was just taking advantage of the virility of crossbred animals. Divine intervention certainly played a part. In any event, Jacob's herds grew and the Lord blessed him. Also, Jacob's separation of the flocks follows principles of good animal husbandry and would have increased the likelihood of having multicolored animals. Genesis chapter 31. The Lord commands Jacob to return to Canaan, and Jacob departs secretly. Laban pursues him. They resolve their differences and make a covenant of peace. Laban blesses his descendants, and he and Jacob part company. And he, and he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all his this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will be there with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 31.4 It is significant to note that Jacob counseled with his wives on the important move he was contemplating. Often modern scholars claim that women in, in the Old Testament were of low status and were treated as property by their husbands. But this example and others like it showed that such was not the case. Back to the scriptures. And said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father, and your father hath deceived me, and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 31, 7. Jacob's comment that Laban changed his wages ten times cannot be documented in the record. That is, ten times cannot be counted. But the nature of Laban makes it not unlikely that once Jacob began to prosper, Laban kept changing the terms of their agreement. Nevertheless, the Lord continued to bless Jacob temporally. Back to the scriptures. If he said thus, the, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straked shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straked. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring, ring straight, speckled and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob. And I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of my kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion of or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours, and our children's, now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 31, 14-16 For he hath sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. It is interesting that both Rachel and Leah agreed that Jacob was justified in leaving Laban, they also pointed out that they had received nothing from their father because of his covetous nature. One commentator explained their bitterness. The dowry was an important part of marriage. We meet at first in Jacob, who worked seven years for Laban to earn a dowry for Rachel. The pay for the service belonged to the bride as her dowry, and Rachel and Leah could in 
indignantly speak of themselves as having been sold by their father because he ha had withheld from them their dowry. It was the family capital. It represented the wife's security in case of divorce where the husband was at fault. If she were at fault, she forfeited it. She could not alienate it from her children. Mm -hmm. There are indications that the normal dowry was about three years wage wages. The dowry thus represented funds provided by the father of the groom or by the groom through work used to further the economic life of the new family. If the father of the bride added to this, it was his privilege and customary, but the basic dowry was from the groom or his family. The dowry was thus the father's blessing on his son's marriage, or a test of the young man's character in working for it. Back to the scriptures. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Padam Aram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 31, 19. What were the images of Laban? There is much debate among scholars about what the images were that were stolen by Rachel and what they represented. The Hebrew word, which is sometimes used for small images of false gods, is teraphim. Some translators render the word as household gods. Was Laban an idolater? If so, why did Jacob go all the way back to, to Haran to find a wife if they were idolaters like the Canaanites? Others believe they were astrological devices used for telling the future. But this suggestion raises some question. the same question. One scholar theorized that these images were somehow tied in with the legal rights of inheritance. If this theory is correct, the possessor of the teraphim had the right to inherit the father's property. Thus, circumstance would explain why Rachel stole the images, since her father had stolen her inheritance. It would also ex explain Laban's extreme agitation over their loss and Jacob's severe penalty offered against the guilty party. Back to the scriptures. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done, that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives taken by the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me, and didst not tell me, that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs, with tabret and with harp? And hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Thou hast now done foolishly in doing so. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. And now, though thou wouldst needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure thou wouldst take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it for to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maidservants' tents, but he found them not. Then he went out to Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tents but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And, she, and he searched but found not the images. And Jacob was wroth and chode with 
Laban? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. This twenty years have I been with thee, thy ewes and thy goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee, I bear the loss of it, of my hand did thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, the fear of Isaac, had been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God hath seen mine affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children. And these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children which they have borne? Now therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it, Jager Sahadutha, and Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid. And Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us. And Jacob sware by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount, and called his brethren to eat bread, and they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them, and Laban departed and returned unto his place. Come follow me, Manual. Ideas for Personal Scripture Study. Genesis 28, 29, 1-18. I am promised the blessings of Abraham in the temple. On his way to Haran to find a wife, Jacob dreamed of a ladder stretching from the earth to the heavens with God standing above it. In the dream, God renewed with Jacob the same covenants he had made with Abraham and Isaac. President Marion G. Romney shared his thoughts about what the ladder could represent. Jacob realized that the covenants he made with the Lord there were the rungs on the ladder that he himself would have to climb in order to obtain the promised blessings blessings that would entitle him to enter heaven and associate with the Lord. Temples are to us all what Bethel was to Jacob. What are other words and phrases in Genesis 28, 10-22 suggest to you a connection between Jacob's experience and the temple blessings? As you read these verses, think about the covenants you have made. What impressions come to you? As you read Genesis 29, 1-18, Ponder how Jacob's marriage to Rachel was important to the covenant God renewed with Jacob and Bethel. Keep this experience in your mind as you continue reading about Jacob's life in Genesis 29-33. to How has the house of the Lord brought you closer to God? Genesis 29, 31-35 31-24 The Lord remembers me in my trials. Even though Rachel and Leah lived in a time and culture different from ours, we can all understand some of the feelings they had. As you read Genesis 29, 31 to 35, and 30, 20, or 1 to 24, look for words and phrases describing God's mercy to Rachel and Leah. 
Ponder how God has looked upon your affliction and remembered you. It is also important to remember that even though God hears us, in His wisdom He doesn't always give us exactly what we ask for. Consider studying Elder Brooke P. Hale's message, Answers to Prayer, to learn about different ways Heavenly Father answers us. For more about the cultural background of this story, see Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis to 2 Samuel, pages 86-88. to Genesis chapter 32. Jacob sees angels. He asks God to preserve him from Esau, for whom he prepares presents. He wrestles all night with the messenger of God. Jacob's name is changed to Israel. He sees God face to face. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother unto the land of Seir, the country of Eden. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban, and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses, flocks and men servants, and women servants, and I have sent to tell my lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks and herds, and the camels, into two bands, and said, If Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which saith unto me, Return unto thy country, and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies, and of all and of all the truth which thou hast shewed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me, and the mother with the children. And thou sayest, I will surely do thee good, and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And he lodged there that same night, and took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau his brother, two hundred she-goats and twenty he-goats, two hundred ewes and twenty rams, thirty milch camels with their colts, forty kine and ten bulls, twenty she-asses and ten foals. And he delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by themselves, and said unto his servants, Pass over before me, and put a space betwixt drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau my brother meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither goest thou, and whose are these before thee? Then thou shalt say, They be thy servant Jacob's. It is a present sent unto my lord Esau, and behold, also he is behind us. And so commanded he the second and the third, and all that followed the drove, saying, on this matter shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him. And say ye moreover, Behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the presence that goeth before me, and afterward will I will see his face, peradventure he will accept of me. So went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. And he rose up that night, and took his two wives, and his two women servants, and his eleven sons, and passed over the ford Jacob, or Jabok. And he took them, and sent them over the brook, and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, 
and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore it is that thou dost ask after my name. And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew which shrank. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 32, 24 to 32, the wrestling of Jacob. What was it? Most scholars believe Jacob wrestled with an angel, but President Joseph Fielding Smith explained why this explanation could not be true. Who wrestled with Jacob on Mount Peniel? The scriptures say it was a man. The Bible interpreters say it was an angel. More than likely, it was a messenger sent to Jacob to give him the blessing. To think he wrestled and held an angel who couldn't get away is out of the question. The term angel, as used in the scriptures at times, refers to messengers who are sent with some important instruction. Later in the chapter, when Jacob said he had beheld the Lord, that did not have reference to his wrestling. Back to the scriptures. Genesis chapter 33. Jacob and Esau meet and are reconciled. Esau receives Jacob's presence. Jacob settles in Canaan, where he builds an altar. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came, and with him four hundred men. And he divided the children unto Leah and, and unto Rachel and unto the two handmaids. And he put the handmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis 33, 1-2 Some have criticized Jacob's arrangement of the camp because it appears that he is putting the handmaids and their children in the most dangerous position. It would, it would be a natural thing, however, in the Middle East for a clan leader to show off his family and the possessions in such a way that the best and most highly favored is saved until last. Back to the scriptures. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him, and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children which God hath graciously given thy servant. Then the handmaidens came near, they and their children, and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves. And after came Joseph near and Rachel, and they bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest thou by all this drove which I met? And he said, These are defying grace in the sight of thy, my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother, keep that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore I have seen thy face, as though I had seen the face of God, and thou wast pleased with me. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that, that, that is brought to thee, because God hath dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. And he said, Let us take our journey, and let us go, and I will go before thee. And he said unto him, My Lord knoweth that the children are tender, and the flocks and herds with young are with me, and if men should overdrive them one day, all the flock will die. Let my Lord, I pray thee, pass over before his servant, and I will lead on softly, according as the cattle that goeth before me, and the children be able to endure, until I come unto my Lord, unto Seir. And Esau said, Let me now leave with thee some of the folk that are with me. And he said, What needeth it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. And Jacob journeyed to Succoth, and built him a house, and made booths for his cattle. Therefore the name of the place is called Succoth. And Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padam Aram, and pitched his tent before the city. And he bought a parcel of a field, where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of money. And he erected there an altar, and called it El Elohi Israel.
Come follow me, Manuel, Genesis 32 to 33. The Savior can help us overcome discord in our families. As Jacob returned to Canaan, he was greatly afraid and distressed about how Esau would receive him. As you read in Genesis 32 to 33 about Jacob's encounter with Esau and his feelings leading up to it, you might ponder your own family relationships, perhaps one that needs healing. Maybe this story could inspire you to reach out to someone. Questions like these could help guide your reading. How did Jacob prepare to meet Esau? What stands out to you about Jacob's prayer found in Genesis 32, 9-12? What do you learn about forgiveness from Esau's example? How can the Savior help us heal family relationships? See also Luke 15, 11 to 32 and Jeffrey R. Holland's talk, The Ministry of Reconciliation. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Home Evening, Genesis 28 to 33. Use Jacob and his family in Old Testament stories to help children understand the events from these chapters. Maybe family members could pause at each picture and identify what is being taught, such such as the importance of marriage, covenants, work, and forgiveness. You could use a ladder or a picture of one to talk about how covenants are like a ladder. What covenants have we made, and how do they bring us closer to God? Family members might enjoy drawing Jacob's dream, described in Genesis 28, 10-22. The hymn, Near My God to Thee, was inspired by Jacob's dream. Your family could sing the song and discuss what each verse teaches. Genesis 32, 24-32 You might have family members who like to wrestle. Why is wrestling a good way to describe seeking blessings from the Lord? What do Enos 1, 1 1-5, Alma 8, 9-10 suggest about what it means to wrestle before God? Genesis 33, 1-12 After many years of hard feelings, Jacob and Esau were reunited. If Jacob and Esau could talk to us today, what might they say to help us when there is contention in family? For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline in Come Follow Me for Primary. Suggested song, Dearest Children, God is Near You, hymn number 96.